Hey guys, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge, and welcome to a Bunches of Lunches Christmas Marathon. Now, over the years, I've made so many cute and fun lunches, and in today's video, I've combined 15 festive school lunch ideas to help get you into the Christmas spirit. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome. On this channel, I love to share all things family, food, and fun. And if that's something you also enjoy, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Okay guys, I'm going to be making a Christmas tree inspired lunch. And for this Christmas tree sandwich, I decided to use some green bread. Now at my local Publix store, it's really easy for me to just order this bread already made, but if you can't get this at your regular store, you could definitely make it yourself or just go ahead and use a regular white bread. That will work excellent too. So now I went ahead and cut out my little tree shape on both pieces and you guys the filling for the sandwich is going to be a little bit unexpected but trust me it is a delicious combination. I'm taking a little bit of this honey pecan cream cheese. This is a little bit sweet but not over the top and I'm going to spread a good amount of this on both pieces of bread and that part is really important because it's going to act as a barrier to the next ingredient. To give the sandwich some really good freshness and some crunch, I'm also going to add in some slices of green apple. Now the trick to this is to slice your apple as thinly as you can. That way it fits a lot better in your sandwich. The cream cheese on both pieces of bread is going to keep this apple from getting our bread soggy. So now what I like to do is layer my apples on my cutting board, then I actually take this same cookie cutter that I used for my sandwich to cut out the apples. That way they are the perfect shape and size for the sandwich. Now I'm going to close this up and what we're left with is a super delicious and definitely festive sandwich. Now you could leave this just as is, but to make this look even more like a Christmas tree, I'm going to take some mini M&Ms. And I'm going to use just about every color of M&M in here except for brown. I'm gonna to stick to just the bright colors. And I'm going to start placing them all over the top of the sandwich. And I'm just placing them first. And once I have them exactly where I want them, I'm going to gently but firmly press them into the bread. I definitely don't wanna poke a hole in my sandwich, but pressing down the little M&M kinda of keeps it from falling off. Now to top this tree, I'm going to take a little piece of carrot that I cut into a star shape. And I'm just adding a little bit of that cream cheese to the back of the carrot to act as glue so that this will stay at the top of my tree. And just so you guys get the idea, here is what the sandwich looks like if you use a regular bread. Now to go along with this sandwich, I'm also gonna be adding in some fresh kiwi. I went ahead and peeled them and cut them. And I just love that vibrant green color. It looks so good in a Christmas themed lunchbox. Next, to make this extra special, I'm also gonna sprinkle just a few little pomegranate seeds right on top. Now in the back of the lunchbox, I'm gonna go ahead and add plenty of edamame. My kids love this stuff. And to add some Christmassy flair to the edamame, I'm going to top it with a few pieces of carrot that I just roughly cut into Christmas tree shapes. Now on the side of this lunch, I'm also going to add some of the holiday shaped goldfish crackers. These are so cute. In here you'll find little Christmas tree shapes and stocking shapes, but they really taste just like regular goldfish. And then for the sweet treat, I have something extra special. I picked these up at Trader Joe's so they're good to go, quick and easy to throw into a lunchbox. These little cookies are filled with chocolate, drizzled with white chocolate, and have plenty of red sprinkles. Next up is a Christmas pizza waffle with ham and extra cheese. So for this pizza waffle, I'm going to start with some waffle mix. And I like this one because it's not already sweetened because I definitely want this to be a savory waffle, not a sweet waffle. Now I'm going to make this batter just like any regular waffle batter, but to make it more Christmassy, I am going to add a bit of green food coloring in here as well. 
Next to my big waffle iron that I've already sprayed, I'm going to add a bit of the batter, followed by the ham and the cheese. And I'm essentially making a pizza stuffed waffle. Now, once the waffle is cooked, I'm cutting it into quarters, and then I'm going to arrange it on our plate to look like a Christmas tree. And you guys, I have to be honest here because I ended up having to make three batches of these pizza waffles because the first one didn't cook long enough, and the second one I accidentally burned. So if you make these, they're cute, but they're not the easiest to make. Now moving on, I'm slicing up a bit of a red and a green apple to be festive. And keeping with the Christmas tree theme, I'm alternating the red and the green slices, and then I'm trimming off a bit of either side. For the veggie, I'm adding some Christmas tree shaped carrots. And for her snack, I'm adding a little Christmas box of goldfish crackers. Now moving on to the treat, I'm going to bake up these classic Christmas tree sugar cookies. These are so fun and so easy. All you have to do is place them on a tray and they're ready to go in the oven. But of course, when they come out of the oven, I do have one more thing I want to add. While these cookies are still a bit warm, I'm going to gently press a mini yellow M&M right on top of each one to kind of look like the star on the Christmas tree. These cookies came out super cute, but they were really easy. And now finally for her drink, I'm adding a bottle of red raspberry punch. Okay guys, so next up I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple but very adorable reindeer sandwich. And for this sandwich, I'm gonna go ahead and start by making some egg salad. But you guys, if you don't like egg salad, you can pretty much make whatever kind of sandwich you want. And then I'll show you how to decorate the outside to look like a reindeer. Now in case you're wondering, I'm keeping this egg salad super simple. It's just hard boiled eggs, of course, mayo, a little bit of onion powder, mustard, and salt and pepper. And I know my daughter Mackenzie is gonna be super excited to see this sandwich because egg salad is her favorite. Okay guys, now you only need a few things to make the sandwich look like a reindeer. I'm gonna cut two small circles out of cheese for the eyes. Next, I'm adding two slices of olive. And since this reindeer is Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, we have to give him a red nose. And you guys, if you don't like tomatoes, you can definitely use a raspberry instead. Now, last but not least for his antlers, I'm just gonna go ahead and add two pretzels right at the top. Now to go along with this lunch, I'm also gonna be adding in some cucumber, again, Mackenzie's favorite. And to go with the green, I'm also going to add some red raspberries. This is such a tasty combination. And then in the back of the lunchbox, I have just enough room for some delicious vanilla Greek yogurt. And right now, this is the one my kids are totally obsessed with. It is Greek yogurt, but it's not too tart. And you guys, to dress up this yogurt, I'm gonna go ahead and add lots of Christmas sprinkles to the top. And because I can't decide on which sprinkles I want to use, I think I'll go ahead and use a little bit of all of them. Now you guys, last but not least, I'm also gonna throw in a super simple but still really festive treat. I picked up these elf snacks from Sam's Club, but I've also seen similar treats at Target and at Walmart. I know a lot of kids love to see fruit snacks in their lunches, so these are really fun for Christmas. Next up, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to dress up a brown bag lunch for Christmas. So for this lunch, I'm going to start with a very special sandwich and I'm going to turn it into kind of a present. On one slice, I'm going to add peanut butter and then on the other slice, I'm going to drizzle on a little bit of Nutella. I'll go ahead and spread that out. And, and then in between the peanut butter and Nutella, I'm going to add some slices of banana. And you guys, a little bit is a trick here. If you try to add too much banana, you're just gonna end up with a big old mess. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close up this sandwich and get it into a sandwich baggie. Now you guys, to make this sandwich baggie look like a present, 
I'm gonna go ahead and take some wrapping ribbon that I had from last year. I'm going to wrap it around my little sandwich baggie like this. One going this direction and one going the other direction. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and add a bow as well. So this sandwich really is going to be just like a present and the person eating it is gonna have to unwrap it first. Now moving on to the fruit. For this lunch, I decided to go with a cup of diced pears. These are the ones in 100% juice, no added sugar. And you guys, to dress this up, I'm going to take some of these sticky present labels that I had from last year as well. These are the ones that you actually stick on presents so you can write to and from, but they're actually a really easy and inexpensive way to dress up your disposable lunch. I'm just gonna stick this right on the top of the fruit cup. Now to go along with this lunch, I also wanna include some really festive crackers and some cheese. Now these Ritz crackers actually have a really cool snowflake design on the outside and then this cheese I got this at Aldi and it is Gouda cheese but it's already cut into little tree shapes all I have to do is kind of break them apart I think these are so cute now I don't want to put these in a bag together because then the cheese would get the crackers all soggy so instead I'm going to use this press and seal wrap so I'm just gonna put down one sheet of this I'll add my crackers on one side and my cheese on the other that I'll just go ahead and fold it over and press and seal. So I'm basically creating my own little bags. Then all I'm gonna do is fold it up so it can fit perfectly in my lunch bag. And now you guys, for the special treat, I'm gonna go ahead and add one of these festive Christmas brownies. And I kid you not, these have been selling out at a lot of the grocery stores near me. So I guess they're pretty popular. I'd say they're kind of like a cosmic brownie with the little chocolate candies on top but of course these are just in a Christmas tree shape. So now I'm gonna go ahead and load up my bag. I always like to add the heavier items on the bottom, lighter items on the top, and of course none of these things have to be refrigerated, so it's perfect for a brown bag lunch. And then for the bag itself, I do have one or two things I want to do to dress it up. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the bag over once it's already filled, and I'm going to take my hole puncher and punch two holes at the top. Then I can go ahead and add one of these beautiful Beautiful tags from Target. Again, these are just regular gift tags. I just love that these come in really fun, sort of kid-friendly design. So I'm gonna go with this adorable one right here. All I have to do is fish it through the little holes that I made and tie it around the back. And there you have it, guys. So even if your school requires a brown bag lunch, you can still do a few things to dress it up for Christmas. You know, there really are so many more Christmas lunch ideas that I would love to share with you. First, I'm making an ornament sandwich. And for this, I am gonna go ahead and use my red loaf of bread. When I ordered my green loaf, I also ordered a red loaf. But of course, you could just use regular bread too for this. And I'm also gonna be using my Uncrustable Maker. I got this off of Amazon. And again, if you don't have this, you can just go ahead and use a cookie cutter or even a large drinking glass. You can use that to cut out your circle. Now for this sandwich, I'm actually gonna start by spreading a little bit of garden veggie cream cheese on both slices of bread. My kids love this garden vegetable cream cheese and it's especially good in sandwiches. Next, I'm gonna add just a little bit of the smoked turkey, not too much. The thing about these pocket sandwiches is that if you overfill them, they won't seal very well and then your filling will fall out. Now, if you don't have one of these that crimps the edges, you can do that yourself by just taking a fork and pressing all the way around the edges to seal it. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to add a few things to the top of the sandwich to make it look like a Christmas ornament. Now, you can use any sort of ingredients you want. I like to use different color bell peppers, cucumbers, you could use onion, green onion, whatever you have. I'm going to add a little piece of cucumber at the top for the top of the ornament. And there you have it guys. And then of course, if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know I am a big fan of the peekaboo sandwich. And there are so many different ways you can do this for Christmas. All you need are a few Christmas cookie cutters. For this sandwich, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the crust now for the filling of the sandwich, I'm just gonna spread a little bit of peanut butter. Whenever you're making a peekaboo sandwich, you wanna think about a sticky type filling. So peanut butter works, almond butter, Nutella, regular butter, cream cheese, things like that are perfect for a peekaboo sandwich. 
And then of course comes the fun part, the sprinkles. And since this is a snowflake design, I'm going to use the blue and white sprinkles. Okay guys, so this next lunch is inspired by one of my favorite Christmas decorations, the Christmas gnome. Now if you guys saw my Christmas house tour, you'll know that I absolutely love these and I have them all over my house. Now I don't have a special cutter or anything to make a gnome sandwich, so I'm just going to be trying my best to eyeball this here. So I'm just starting with two pieces of regular bread and I'm gonna cut this into a basic triangle because most Christmas gnomes are basic triangle shape. Then for the sandwich, I'm going to be using salami and cheese. And I'm going to be using the bread as my guide as I cut my salami and my cheese to fit the sandwich. And you guys, for this sandwich, it's going to be a little bit different. After I add a little bit of mayo, I'm going to be adding a slice of cheese and salami inside the sandwich, and I have a slice of each for outside of the sandwich. And you guys, to get the beard shape for the gnome, I just took my kitchen scissors and kind of went around the edges of the cheese just like this. Now usually with a Christmas gnome, you do not see his or her eyes, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But for the nose, I decided to take some of the extra crust that I cut off of the sandwich and roll it into a little bread ball to form the nose. And check it out, you guys. This is such a cute little gnome sandwich. You guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you are a fan of Christmas gnomes. Now for this lunch, I am sticking with the red and green fruit and veggie. Over here, I'm going to add in some whole strawberries. Of course, the shape of the strawberry is a lot like a gnome hat. And for the veggie, I'm going to be taking some sugar snap peas, which surprisingly my kids enjoy. And using a couple of these skewers, I'm going to add about three to five pieces onto each of them and just like this. Now, if you guys don't like sugar snap peas, you can also do the same thing with a bell pepper, sweet peppers, or even apples. And there you have it, some cute little trees for our lunchbox. And I am gonna decorate this lunchbox with a couple of gnome rings. I get asked about these all the time. These are actually meant for the top of a cupcake, but I like to add them into lunchboxes sometimes to add a lot of fun and color to the lunch. Next, I'm gonna be combining the snack and the sweet treat by making some peanut butter Christmas crunch. For this, I'm gonna be using some Chex cereal, some mini pretzels, and some roasted peanuts. And here's where it gets fun, you guys. I'm also going to be adding some Muddy Buddy mix. And then to put even more peanut butter in this, I'm also going to add in a few of these peanut butter M&Ms, followed by a handful of mini marshmallows. So as you can see, this is a sweet and a savory mix. A lot of times you'll find recipes that are similar to this, but they also have you drizzle like white chocolate on there as well, but that gets really messy and more sweet than I need it to be, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So now I'm gonna add some of this peanut butter Christmas crunch to the center of our lunch box, and then that's all there is to this super cute gnome lunch. Now you guys, these lunch boxes are really just suggestions. Of course, if you have an older kid that needs more food, definitely put more food in their lunch box. I'm making this particular lunch for my youngest kiddos, so they don't need quite as much. I'm kicking things off with my personal all-time favorite Christmas movie, which is Home Alone, the original. Now there's actually quite a lot of food in this movie, but it's not necessarily super healthy or anything like that. When I think of the movie Home Alone, I automatically think of cheese pizza. So that's exactly what I'm going to make for the main course of this lunch. Now you guys, I am gonna be cheating a little bit here by using some ready-made thin crust pizza dough. But to really make this Home Alone themed, I'm going to cut the crust into house shapes. So to this flatbread, I'm going to add just a bit of sauce, and then we cannot forget the cheese. Now, if you are a fan of Home Alone, you'll know exactly why I'm just adding cheese and no other toppings. He started it. He ate my pizza on purpose. He knows I ate sausage and olives. And now I'm going to pop these into the oven for about 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted. <sighs> A lovely cheese pizza just for me. Now I don't remember seeing much fruit in this movie, but I do remember seeing Kevin buy orange juice while shopping for himself. So for this lunch, I'm gonna go ahead and add some little mandarin oranges. 
And of course, the same thing goes for veggies. I don't remember seeing many veggies in this movie. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some cucumber strips and some carrots as well to spell out Kevin. Now as far as snacks go, in the movie a bag of crunch taters can be seen. But as far as I know, they stopped making crunch taters back in the 90s. So instead, I'm going to add just a regular potato chip bag on the side. And then, since I know that ice cream sundaes are a big deal in this movie and Home Alone 2, I thought a mini ice cream sundae would be the perfect thing to finish off this lunch. You're watching rubbish. You better come out and stop me. He'll call you when he gets out. For this, I'm using one of these cute little ice cream cups. This pack comes with both chocolate and vanilla. I've decided to go with the vanilla. And then to this ice cream, I'm going to be adding plenty of toppings like mini marshmallows, chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, whipped cream, plenty of Christmas sprinkles, and of course, a cherry on top. Before the drink, I also spied a can of Pepsi in this movie, so that's what I'm adding as well, except I only have this kind of Pepsi in my house right now, so that's what I'm going with. And there you have it, guys, a Home Alone-inspired lunch. Now moving on to another one of our favorite Christmas movies, Elf. When I think about food from this movie, I automatically think of the elf pasta that Buddy makes for himself. To his spaghetti, Buddy adds M&Ms, marshmallows, chocolate syrup, more candy, and then crushed up fudge Pop-Tart. Now obviously this is a ton of sugar. We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, syrup. Now I didn't want to really make elf pasta for the main course of this lunch. Instead, I am going to make an elf pasta inspired treat to go along with the lunch. Now I'll go ahead and add a link down below to the exact recipe I'm using for these in case you want to make them for yourself. But basically this has a lot of the same ingredients as Buddy's pasta, but instead of using pasta, I'm using crunchy chow mein noodles to make kind of a haystack style treat. So now I'm going to set these in the fridge to harden up while I make the rest of the lunch. For the actual main course, I'm going to be making a super simple elf hat quesadilla using a green tortilla, some cheese, and some roast beef. You stink. I like beef and cheese. You don't smell like Santa. Okay. <laughs> <gasps> Now after that's all melted together, I'm going to go ahead and cut this into an elf hat shape. And then to the top, I'm adding just a bit of cheddar cheese to look like the hat's band. And then a little piece of bell pepper for the feather. Now for the fruit, I'm going to make some Santa hat strawberries, since we know Buddy loves Santa. And for the veggies, I'm putting together some cucumber and carrot Christmas trees. These are so fun, but really easy to make. And then of course, last but not least, I'm adding just one of the elf pasta treats on the side. And there you have it guys, an elf inspired lunch. If you want the thing you love, you did it! Congratulations! Okay guys, next up is a classic Christmas movie, A Christmas Story. And you guys, I would love to know in the comments down below how many of you have actually seen this movie. This was super popular when I was a kid. Now, just like our last movie inspired lunch, I'm starting out this one by making the treat first. And of course, for this movie, the treat has to be fudge. Now, if you've seen this movie, you'll know exactly why I say that. I see. 
but for this I'm just using a super simple two ingredient fudge recipe. You literally just have to melt together two and a half cups of chocolate chips with one can of sweetened condensed milk. Now I'm just zapping this in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stirring in between until it's all melted together. When it is melted together, it should look something like this. And you guys, at this point, you could add in some marshmallows or some nuts. That would be super tasty. But today, I'm keeping it simple. I'm going to go ahead and spread this out just as is. But then, to make it a little bit more Christmassy, I'm going to sprinkle on just a few red and green mini M&Ms. And now, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the fridge so it can set up while I'm making the rest of the lunch. For the main course of this lunch, I wanted to do something with meatloaf, even though I know not everyone is a fan of meatloaf. Meatloaf, meatloaf, double beatloaf. I hate meatloaf. So with this meatloaf, I thought it would be really fun to make a bunny-shaped meatloaf sandwich. Now personally, I like a meatloaf sandwich. And this one is of course extra cute because of the bunny shape. And this is to represent the bunny suit that the main character Ralphie has to wear. Immediately my feet began to sweat as those two fluffy little bunnies with the blue button eyes stared sappily up at me. Now moving on to the fruit, for this I'm just adding some watermelon in the shape of a leg lamp. A lamp! It was indeed a lamp. Isn't that great? And then to go along with this, I'm also adding in some coleslaw since they have red cabbage with their dinner in this movie. And the same thing goes for the mashed potatoes. And then you guys, last but not least, just a tiny piece of the fudge. For today's lunch, I'm going with a breakfast for lunch theme. I'm going to start by cracking five eggs into my measuring cup. To these, I'm going to add some milk, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm going to whisk them up. Now my idea is to turn these into some Christmas themed egg bites. Egg bites are usually a big hit around here, so I'm hoping that my kids will like this Christmas version. And instead of using my regular silicone egg pan, I thought it would be really festive to use this Christmas tree shaped pan instead. I found this one at Aldi. I just added a few pieces of mild green onion and a pinch or two of shredded cheddar cheese. Now I'm going to pour the egg mixture on top and these are only going to take about 10 to 12 minutes in the oven at 350. So while those are in the oven, I'm going to prepare some waffles to go along with them, but not just any waffles. For these, I'm going to start with our favorite waffle mix, although these also make really good pancakes too. This is the Kodiak Cakes brand, and I like this one because there's lots of whole grains in there, but there's also lots of protein, so I know these are going to help keep the kids nice and full while they're at school. And this mix is definitely a big shortcut because all you really have to do is add equal parts dry mix and water. And just with these two things, you would have some really awesome waffles. But to turn these into Christmas waffles, I'm going to add just a few extra things. I'm adding in one tablespoon of melted coconut oil, and I'm going to mix it all together. And then here comes the fun part. Now if you're sensitive to food coloring, you definitely don't have to do this step. I'm going to go ahead and add three or four drops of green food coloring, because when I'm done with these waffles, I want them to look like Christmas trees. Now I I do want this to be a little bit more vibrant, so I'm going to add just a few more drops of food coloring. I'll mix that all together, and now it looks like it's ready to go. So to make these waffles, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of nonstick spray to my waffle iron, and this is just a regular round waffle iron, nothing fancy at all. And I'm going to add about three scoops of the waffle batter in here. I definitely want to overfill this, but I also want to make sure that I end up with a nice full waffle as well. This waffle iron is super quick. It only took about two minutes and they're ready to go. And I am going to go ahead and make four of these waffles because I know all of my kids are going to want some, especially my preschoolers. So I want to make sure to have enough for him as well. So now that my waffles are done and my egg bites are done, I want to go ahead and get these egg bites in the thermoses while they're still nice and hot. And I'm adding two egg bites for my older kids and for my younger kids I'm just adding one. 
Now to go along with these egg bites, I'm also gonna give the kids a little container of ketchup. My kids love ketchup with egg bites. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit into these little separate containers. I get these at the Dollar Tree and they work perfectly for things like sauces and dips and they're super inexpensive. You get 10 for a dollar. So now back to the waffles. These are definitely meant to be eaten at room temperature, which my kids are totally fine with. And since I put all those M&Ms on the outside, I'm not gonna be including any syrup with these waffles at all. Next up, I'm putting together some veggie Christmas trees. Now I've been making different variations of these for a long time, and there's actually quite a lot of different ways you can make these. But what I like to do is take a carrot, I'll cut out a star shape using my mini cookie cutter that will go on the top of my tree. Then I also cut just a little piece of carrot like this, and this guy's gonna basically be the base of the tree. Next, what I like to use is a long strip of cucumber. Now you could cut this with a knife, of course, but I really like to use my mandolin slicer. It gets these nice and thin, and it makes cutting these a lot faster too. So now I take my strip of cucumber, and I bend it back and forth, and it's going to taper down just like this. Then I stick a toothpick down the center. I'll then stick one end of the toothpick into our little carrot tree stump. Then I'll take the other end of the toothpick and stick it into the star. Now you guys, I just love how these turned out, and it's definitely one of my favorite, healthier alternatives when it comes to making cute Christmas themed food. Now to go along with this, I'm also gonna be adding in some goldfish crackers, but these are actually the holiday edition ones. So there's just red and green ones in here. Then of course we have those egg bites in the thermos, but I wanted to go ahead and add some Christmas flair to the little ketchup container. And a really fun and quick way to decorate this is by using Christmas stickers. Now you guys, these are actually Christmas gift tag stickers. I'm just gonna take this snowflake one and add it directly on top. Now to finish these lunch boxes, I'm also gonna add in some Baby Bell cheese. I used my mini star shaped cookie cutter on these just to make them a little bit more Christmassy. And then I'm not gonna be adding a separate sweet treat since I have all of those M&Ms in there already. And for the kids' drink today, they're just gonna be taking their water bottles. Today's lunch is gonna be so quick and easy. It's going to be meat free, it's going to be nut free, and it's also going to include some really cute elf on the shelf treats. You guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you guys do the whole elf on the shelf thing at your house. So for today's lunch, I started by peeling and chopping up a bunch of avocados. Now I actually bought a bag of these avocados at Costco a few days ago, but they all need to be used up today, otherwise they're gonna go bad. So I thought it'd be really fun to make up some guacamole. My kids love guacamole, so now I've added all of these avocado chunks to a large bowl, but how we really like it is with a little bit of mayo. Then I also add a little bit of mild salsa. Emphasis on the mild, my kids really don't like it if I use spicy. I'm just gonna add about two spoonfuls of this. Next I'm adding in a little bit of garlic and some salt and pepper. And then I also added the juice of one lime in here. Not only does that add a nice bright flavor, but that lime juice is also gonna help the guacamole not turn brown in the lunchbox. So now to finish this guacamole, I'm just gonna take my potato masher and I'm gonna mash this up just a bit. I don't want it to be completely smooth. We like our guacamole on the chunkier side. And one once it is completely done, I can add it into the lunchbox. Now I decided to put that guacamole in this separate section of the lunchbox, and just for fun, I'm also gonna be adding in one of these really cute Christmas picks right in here. Now to go along with this guacamole, I'm also gonna be adding in some tortilla chips, but not just plain tortilla chips. I recently saw these at a grocery store called Publix, and I thought they would be perfect for today's lunch because of the red and green color. They are super festive, my kids are going to love them. Before I add in the chips, I am gonna go ahead and add this star-shaped silicone liner in here, and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the space with the tortilla chips. Then to the separate silicone liner, I'm going to add a handful of shredded cheese. This is the Mexican blend cheese, so it's gonna go really well with our tortilla chips and the guacamole, and what's also gonna go really well with these is a little bit of sour cream. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in this back section of the lunchbox. I'm gonna add a Christmas pick in here 
here as well. And then it's time to move on to some fruit. Now for today's lunch, I wanna keep it quick and easy. So I'm gonna add in a go-go squeeze applesauce pouch. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my napkin. This is a really cute elf on the shelf napkin. And I'm actually going to wrap it around my applesauce pouch, kind of like wrapping a present. But then they can also use the napkin at lunchtime as they're eating their lunch. And then last but not least, I'm also gonna throw in some of these elf on the shelf Christmas cake bites. Now I think these look super for fun. I found these at Walmart and these are really perfect for throwing into a lunch because they already come in this really cute packaging. And speaking of really cute packaging, this one actually leaves a space for you to write a message. So I'm just going to take my Sharpie markers and I'm going to write a little message for each one of my kids. So now that's everything in one lunch. Now I'm going to put the other two together in just the same way. And for the kids drink, again, they're just going to be taking their water bottles. For today's lunch, I'm gonna start by making some Santa sandwiches. Now, I recently found these really cute metal cookie cutters at Target for just a dollar, so I went ahead and picked up three of these, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those a little bit later. To make these sandwiches, I'm going to start with a little bit of mayo. I'm just gonna add a little bit to both slices of bread, and then just to Lily's sandwich, I'm also adding a little bit of mustard. Next, I'm adding one slice of honey ham, followed by one slice of cheddar cheese, so it's a good old ham cheese sandwich and now it's time for those Santa cookie cutters now these little cutters fit my bread perfectly so I'm just going to line them up and then press them through the sandwich but at this point I'm actually gonna be leaving the cookie cutter in the sandwich and I'm going to add it to the lunchbox just as is this is going to be a fun surprise for the kids in their lunch boxes the cookie cutters are not sharp so I'm not worried about that but sending the sandwich this way means they can eat the entire thing not just the cutout shape and now it's time for for some rings. Now you guys, I love adding cupcake rings to my lunches. Not only are they food safe because they're meant to go on cupcakes after all, but these come in so many different styles and colors and you can actually find them really inexpensively on Amazon. My kids think these are really fun at lunchtime. They can wear them or they can give them away to friends. For today's lunch, I'm gonna be adding in the Santa shaped one and I thought it would be really interesting to stick it into the sandwich right here. I don't know, some might say interesting, some might say that looks a little bit creepy, but today we're going for it. Now in this back section, I'm going to add some reusable green silicone liner. I'm gonna give each kid a few pieces of celery. Then for my son Jackson, I'm adding some cherry tomatoes. I love that combination of red and green, but my girls don't really like cherry tomatoes, so for them, I'm going to add a few spiral sliced carrots instead. And for their fruit, I'm going to add in these little tiny mandarin oranges. Now I went ahead and added these to the lunch boxes whole but I am going to go ahead and take my paring knife and I'm going to cut a little slit at the top of each one. This is going to make it easier for the kids to peel once they're at school and it also gives me a little space to add some bling. That's right, I'm just going to stick one of these little reindeer rings right on the top. Now I'm going to fill in the rest of the space around the sandwich with some of these holiday goldfish crackers. Then for the sweet treat, I'm going to be adding some really fun sugar cookies. Now you guys, I have to admit, I am not the best when it comes to decorating cookies, but you know what? Target is. Target has been making some really cute sugar cookies recently, so I just went ahead and bought these at the store. Already made, they're already wrapped and ready to go. Definitely a time saver, but still really cute and special. For Miss Lily, she requested the gingerbread. For Jackson, I'm going to give him the Santa. And for Mackenzie, I'm gonna give her the Christmas tree. Now to go along with this, the kids are gonna take their water bottles, but I thought it would be really fun since I'm adding cookies to the lunch to also add some milk because I feel like at Christmas time, milk and cookies definitely go together. So for the milk, I'm actually gonna start by upcycling a few little water bottles. And I really like these ones specifically because the outside of the bottle is really curvy, which is perfect because I'm gonna use a few of my Sharpie markers to turn these into snowman milk bottles. Now this is something I've been doing for years. My kids love it. And I end up reusing these bottles several times. Then I'm going to take my orange Sharpie to add a little carrot nose. Now you guys, I'm actually not super crafty at things like this, but it's so easy. You really can't go wrong, and you can even have your kids help you make these. It's a really fun project. Now I'm gonna finish off this guy with a few little buttons. I'm gonna draw in some arms and some fingers. And once I have all of my bottles done, I can go ahead and fill them with milk. 
Now to do this, I'm definitely using my funnel because if you guys know me, I'm not the best at pouring things without spilling. So I'm really going slow here to make sure I don't spill. Now lastly, to finish off these little snowman bottles, I'm just gonna take a little bit of ribbon. This is just some leftover ribbon that I already had around the house. And I'm just gonna tie it around the neck of the bottle. And check it out, you guys. Don't these snowman bottles look so cute? For today's lunch, I'm going with a snowman theme. Now you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you've ever built a real snowman. Believe it or not, my kids really haven't had the experience. It never really snowed where we lived in California and it's certainly not snowing here in Florida. So for today's lunch, I'm going to start by using some bagel thins. Now these look and taste just like bagels. They're just a lot thinner. They're great for making sandwiches and perfect for putting into lunch boxes. So to my bagels, I'm gonna start by adding some plain cream cheese. Now I actually left this cream cheese out overnight so it's nice and soft and it'll be easier to spread. I'm gonna add a good layer of cream cheese right onto here. Next, I'm gonna be adding adding two blueberries to each one of these. Now I picked out the biggest blueberries I could find for this part, and then I picked out the smallest blueberries I could for this next part. I'm just gonna add four or five of these to the bottom of each little bagel. Now I know a lot of you guys can probably already guess what I'm trying to make here. Now of course you can't have a snowman without a carrot nose, right? So I'm actually gonna take these real whole carrots and I'm gonna cut the tips off. I'm gonna give them a good wash and I'm going to peel them as well. And then I'm just gonna stick the little carrot tips right in the center of the bagel. Now these snowmen already look super cute, but I feel like most snowmen have hats, right? So to make the snowman's hat, I'm just gonna take a couple of apples and I'm gonna cut out some basic square and rectangle shapes to create some little hats. So now that our snowman is in the lunch box, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the snack. And for today's lunch, I have some really awesome Christmas pretzels. Now I found these at Walmart, and these are not sweet pretzels at all. They really just taste like regular ones. But in here there's a bell shape, a Christmas tree shape, a candy cane shape, and a snowflake. So it's super cute, and they just fit perfectly right in here. Next up for the sweet treat, I'm gonna add in just a few of these ginger snowball cookies. Now now, I actually found these ones at Trader Joe's, and even though they do have a really nice ginger flavor, it's not overpowering. Sometimes ginger can be too sharp and my kids don't really like it, but these ones are nice and mild. And of course, with that powdered sugar on the outside, they definitely look like snowballs. So I think they go really well with this snowman theme. And speaking of snowman theme, I'm also gonna throw in just a few little snowman decorations. And then for the kids' snack today, I'm gonna be including a yogurt pouch. Now I know this kind of looks like applesauce, but it's definitely yogurt. And even though Forky is cute, he's not necessarily Christmas themed. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this yogurt pouch as I did to the applesauce pouch earlier this week. So it's kind of like a present, but the kids will be able to unwrap it at lunchtime and actually use the napkin if they need it. Then of course, since we're going with a snowman theme, I'm bringing back the little snowman milk bottles that I made yesterday. The kids love these, so it's a perfect time to bring them back. So for today's lunch, I'm actually gonna be starting by making the treat first. And I knew I wanted to make gingerbread cookies, but I also knew I didn't have time to make them from scratch so I think these already made ones will be perfect. Now I've seen this gingerbread cookie dough at most grocery stores, so it's pretty easy to find. So to bake these, I'm just gonna add a little bit of parchment paper to my pan, then I'm gonna try to evenly spread these out. And check it out, you guys, in this package, not only do you get gingerbread men, but you also get gingerbread women, which I love. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into the oven for about 10 minutes and I'm definitely gonna keep my eye on these because burnt gingerbread is no good. Now while those are in the oven, I'm gonna move on to the sandwiches. And you guys, I have this really cute themed cookie cutter that I was going to use for this sandwich, but unfortunately the cutter is a little bit too big for my bread, which is such a bummer. So here's plan B. Instead of using my Rudolph cutter, I'm going to use these little gingerbread cutters instead. I found these at Walmart, they were super inexpensive, and most importantly, they're not too big 
everything for my bread. So for these sandwiches, I'm actually gonna start by cutting out the bread first. I have a little gingerbread house shape and a gingerbread man as well. And don't worry you guys, if you know me, I always save my crust, it does not go to waste. I like to put it in a Ziploc bag, stick it in the freezer, and then I'll actually use these in recipes at a later time. So now for these sandwiches, I'm gonna start by spreading out some peanut butter. Of course, you also could use cookie butter, which tastes a lot like gingerbread, which would be perfect for this. But since I don't actually have any of that right now, I'm just gonna use peanut butter. And then for the jam, instead of just using strawberry like I normally would, I thought I would switch it up and use the mango flavored jam instead. And that's a big tip, you guys. If you or your kids are getting tired of the same old PB&J, just change out the J part, use a different flavor, and suddenly it'll be more exciting. Okay guys, now as you can see, I've made two sandwiches per child, and I think they look super cute as is. But I thought it would be really fun to go ahead and add some detail to these using my food writer pens. Now I always find these near the cake decorating section and it's basically food coloring that you can use like a marker. But I do have to say, especially when drying on bread, it can be a little bit challenging since the bread has lots of nooks and crannies. For the kids fruit, I'm going to go ahead and add in some kiwi. That bright green color is perfect for Christmas. And speaking of green, I'm also going to add in some cucumber slices. I went ahead and made these into star shapes. And then for the snack, I'm also going to be adding in some goldfish crackers, but these ones are a little bit different. Earlier this week I used the holiday colored goldfish crackers, but today I'm using the holiday shapes. So in here there are stocking shaped, Christmas tree shaped, and of course the traditional fish shape as well. And you guys, I found both of these packages of Christmas goldfish crackers at Target. Okay guys, so now our gingerbread cookies are out of the oven and they've had enough time to completely cool down. And if I had time, I would love to decorate the outside of these cookies, but for today I'm just going to go ahead and stick them in these separate containers and I'm gonna send them to school just as they are. So that's one lunch down and two to go. Germany in December is famous for their Christmas markets. They are all over the place. So all of the foods I've chosen for this lunch are traditionally found at Christmas markets throughout Germany. So I'm gonna start by preparing some Bratwurst. Now I actually found these at Trader Joe's. I'm not sure if they're super authentic, but it's the best I can find in my area. To go along with these, I'm trying out a new recipe for red cabbage. Now we have never tried this before. I think it's kind of like sauerkraut, but with purple cabbage and apples. And after about 30 minutes on the stove top, it looks like this. But I have to say the vinegar smell is pretty strong. Hopefully the kids will like it. While the cabbage was cooking, I also prepared some German potato pancakes. Now I've been told these are very popular at Christmas markets. And depending on where you're from in Germany, you might call them Kartoffelpuffer. Or they might be called Reibekuchen, which are both really hard for me to say. Now before I add these to the lunch boxes, I will add some authentic German mustard to just Lily's. I don't think any of the other kids will want to try it. They don't really care for mustard. I've tried this German mustard and I think it's really good. And I don't think it's too spicy. In this small container, I'm going to add a little bit of the red cabbage. Like I said, I'm not sure if the kids will like it, but I wanted to give them just a little bit so they can at least try it. And in the other compartment, I'm gonna add some authentic German pickles. So I'll go ahead and give the kids each one pickle, but for Lily, I'll go ahead and put two because usually she loves pickles. In this separate container, I went ahead and added one potato pancake per child, and I decided to give them some applesauce to go with it because I think they'll really like that. And then for dessert, I have a very special German cookie. These are called Lebkuchen. Now these cookies have a cake-like texture, and they typically come frosted. These ones have chocolate on them. And I'd say it's kind of like gingerbread. They have spices and honey, and these ones contain nuts as well. And there you have it, a German Christmas market inspired lunch. This next Christmas lunch was inspired by Japan. Now I've personally spent two Christmases in Japan and it's quite different than it is in the US. So that means they definitely don't prepare the traditional big Christmas feast like we do but I think what they do eat might surprise you. At a Japanese Christmas party, you're probably gonna find some kind of sushi or fish, and so I picked up this tray from my local grocery store. I'm going to offer this to the kids. I don't know if they'll like it, but if they don't, I know my husband will, so it's all good. And of course, it wouldn't be a Japanese Christmas without Kentucky Fried Chicken. 
A popular slogan in Japan is Kurisumasu ni wa Kentucky. Now this Japanese tradition is only about 40 years old. But if you want to get KFC on Christmas Day, you can't just walk up and order it in Japan. You usually have to order your KFC weeks in advance. Luckily for us, I just went through the drive through and here it is. So along with the KFC, I also gave the kids some corn that came with the meal. I also added some edamame and a Japanese style satsuma orange. And last but not least, I couldn't forget the Japanese Christmas cake. Definitely one of my favorite traditions. These are traditionally eaten on Christmas Eve. It's basically a sponge cake filled with whipped cream. It often has strawberries or fresh fruit on it. And it almost always has a cute little Santa decoration on top. So I'm just gonna give the kids each one little slice to go with their lunch. And there you have it, a Japanese inspired Christmas lunch. Itadakimasu! Our next lunch is inspired by Mexico. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever been to Mexico or if you're from Mexico. Now we actually live pretty close to an authentic Mexican market. So I was able to pick up a lot of things for this lunch there. But I'm gonna start off this lunch by making a really special salad. This is called Ensalada de Nochebuena. And each family kind of makes it their own way. But usually this salad is a combination of fruits and vegetables. Some recipes might have apples or oranges. Lots of recipes will have jicama. And just like that, the salad is ready. It's such an interesting combination. When I was at the Mexican market, I also picked up this jar of ponche, which is basically a hot fruit punch. This traditional drink is very popular around Christmas and it's made with lots of different fruits, sugar cane, and cinnamon. So in this jar is actually the concentrated drink. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into my pot, add a liter of water and some sugar, and I'm gonna let this simmer for 30 minutes. So while this is simmering away, I'll go ahead and prepare the rest of today's lunch. And that means heating up some delicious soup. This soup is called pozole. This soup has hominy. It can also have beef or pork. This one is pork. It has lots of seasoning in there, but it's not too spicy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these to the thermoses. To go along with that, another Christmas time favorite, some chicken tamales. So in this next compartment, I'll go ahead and add our salad. And then to go along with that, a really special snack. These are buñuelos. Now these are a crispy fried treat. They sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on there. And then last but not least, something I've always wanted to try. This is a rosca de reyes, which basically means ring of the kings. Now technically, this is traditionally served in January to celebrate the epiphany. But since it was available at the store, I thought we could try it anyway. Our ponche is ready, but it's still really hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down. And I've read that it's traditional to serve it with a cinnamon stick. And I have to say, it smells really good. These next lunches were inspired by the countries in the UK. So for this lunch, I'm gonna start by making some pigs in a blanket, but I'm gonna make the UK version. In America, when we say pigs in a blanket, it's usually a sausage or a hot dog with bread dough wrapped around it. But in the UK, it's a sausage or a chipolata with streaky bacon wrapped around it. So once I've wrapped the bacon around, I'm also gonna add a toothpick just to keep the bacon on the little sausage. Then I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of brown sugar on there and get them into the oven. While those are in the oven, I'm gonna start on another Christmas favorite, which is a Yorkshire pudding. Now in America, when we say pudding, we probably think of like jello pudding, but a Yorkshire pudding is more like a bread that you serve with dinner. They're actually pretty easy to make, but I don't have the special kind of pan, so mine just turned out so-so. Next, I'm gonna add a few slices of roasted turkey. I actually got this pre-cooked at Costco. Now, just like America, turkey is very popular on Christmas and is usually the main course. And to go along with this, I've added some cranberry sauce. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my Yorkshire pudding, which I'm going to add just a little bit of gravy to. I've heard that's very traditional. And then in this other section, I'm gonna add just a few of our little pigs in a blanket. For our vegetable today, I just roasted up some carrots. And for the dessert, I picked up some of these pre-made mince pies. 
These little pies have fruit and nuts, spices and orange peel. And since these ones are walkers, they have like a shortbread crust on top. These are actually a product of Scotland. And I just love them because they remind me of Harry Potter. These are so cute. They come in a little tin and the box says that you could heat them up or just serve them room temperature. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next up, we have lunches inspired by Canada. I'm gonna start by making a very famous French Canadian Christmas time dish called a tortière. So this is a meat pie, traditionally made with pork or beef. I'm doing a combination of both. This also has onions and garlic, mashed potatoes, and then you bake this into a pie. Now I'm taking a lot of help from a store here and I'm using a store-bought pie crust, which I'm totally cool with. Pie making is not my specialty at all. I'm gonna try to make this as pretty as I can. I'm gonna brush some egg wash on the top and then get it into the oven. Now I actually made this one the night before because I've been told that it's best the day after served with lots of ketchup. So I'm just gonna give the kids one little slice with ketchup and then to go along with that, I'm also gonna give them some Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna put a poll right up here for you guys to let me know if you like Brussels sprouts or if you don't like Brussels sprouts because I know it can go either way. Let me know. Next, I'm adding another food that's popular in Canada and that's popular other places too, and that's a pierogi. Next up, I'm adding a very special dessert that I actually made the day before, and that is a Nanaimo bar. Now I have to admit I had never heard of these before I met my husband. It is a family tradition of his that they would make these every Christmas. So basically this is a no-bake dessert and it's named after this city called Nanaimo in British Columbia. It's a combination of graham crackers, cocoa powder, coconut, walnuts, pudding, and chocolate chips. This dessert is not hard to make but it's definitely time consuming because you have to make three different layers. And then just for fun, I'm gonna throw in some apples, just because I feel like the kids need some kind of fruit to go with this lunch. And there you have it. Okay guys, now I hope you enjoyed these Christmas inspired lunches. Let me know if you would eat any of these lunches yourself. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and share this video with someone who loves Christmas movies and fun food. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.